also, how many of you guys remember learning about the scientific method in school? Um, you may not remember all the steps, though, so let me re remind you. Um, step one, you have a question. Step two, you form a hypothesis. Step three, you design an experiment to test your hypothesis. Step four, you make some conclusions based on your tests, the results of your test. And step five, you confirm your hypothesis or you reform a new hypothesis. Sounds really exciting and thrilling. And if that doesn't just get you to jump up out of your chairs right now and go study some science, I don't know what will. <laughs> right? I'm joking. Right? <laughs> I mean, it sounds dreadful. I mean, dreadful and boring, right? The scientific method. I mean, who goes and makes hypotheses? Um, <clears throat> except for scientists, right? And I remember when I learned the scientific method, I kind of felt really disconnected from it. Like I was studying something that other people did. You know, those people in the white lab jackets doing the sciencey stuff? Like, that's what they did, not anything I would ever do. Oh, is it? There we go. It might be my earring. I don't know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so, so anyway, the scientific method for me, I felt really, it, was, it felt really foreign and, and really disconnected. Um, I, I want to tell you something, though, that I learned about the scientific method from my two-year-old. <clears throat> so when she was about 20 months old, she received um, this new, brand new little mini kitchen. It was a plastic toy. And you could push, push a bunch of buttons on it, and it had, um, you know, a, a stove, and it had little food items with it. And um, you could put a little frying pan on top of the burner, and it would sound like it was frying bacon. And um, anyways, it was really fun to be able to watch her kind of explore this new toy because she didn't really know how any of it worked. And one of the things I remembered um, by, you know, when I found out I was going to be a mother um, was thinking that I was really looking forward to witnessing kind of unbounded curiosity and just like kind of raw wonder, right? Because we're always told that about children. And, um, and so I was really looking forward to her kind of digging into this toy. And she did. You know, she was pushing the buttons and she was, you know, making the, um, the noises come on and stuff. And, um, and at one point, she got really fixated on the oven door. And I think particularly because it was a little tricky, she couldn't just push it to make the, the music come on. And so she was trying to figure out what the point of this oven door was. So she was, you know, tapping on it and hitting it and pulling on the sides and pulling on the top. Everything. And, and at one point, you know, being her mother, I kind of wanted to jump in and say, this is how you do it, you know, you just pull down the top. And, but I, I restrained and I just, I watched her kind of explore and eventually she figured it out, right? She figured out that if you pull down hard enough on the top of this oven door, it would open and music would play. And she got so excited and giggled and, and I was very proud, you know, very, very proud, proud mother that she figured out how to open the oven door. And, you know, all these things kept popping into my head, you know, like, Harvard, here we come, right? <laughs> and, and I realized what she was doing. You know, she was learning about her environment. She was trying to understand cause and effect. But it was, it was really more than that. I realized that this 20-month-old child was doing the scientific method. Right? I mean, she was, she was doing the scientific method. She had no idea what she was doing. It's not like she was going down the list, right? Step one, I have a question. Step two, I need to form a hypothesis, right? She had no idea about any of those things, but she was doing the scientific method. And it dawned on me that science is so much more intuitive than even I ever realized. <clears throat> and at that moment, I remember um, a movie quote pop popping into my head, actually, um, from The Matrix. And Morpheus, do I, do I have some fans here of the Matrix? <laughs> yeah. So Morpheus, he says at one point, there is a difference between walking the path and knowing the path. Right, so there was my, my little daughter, my little 20-month-old, walking the path of a scientist and having no idea that she was doing it. And it was really quite powerful and profound, and, and I kind of learned something especially about my role as a teacher of science. 
And one of the things that I, I thought about was how is it that my 20-month-old daughter intuitively understands the process, yet I might have a hard time getting my freshman chemistry students to do it. No offense if any of you are in the audience. <laughs> Right, but it, I feel like the way that science is presented to us kind of kills any kind of intuition. It's kind of presented to us on a platter. Here is what scientists do. Okay, so if you want to be a scientist, then these are the steps. These are the things that you need to learn. Here are the theories you need to understand, the techniques you need to master. Right, but we're not really kind of nurturing their intuition which my 20-month-old um, daughter proved to me we have a lot of. <clears throat> so imagine being um, in, in elementary school and, and learning the scientific method in a different way. Instead of it being presented to you in a stepwise fashion and, and say, this is what you can do with it, imagine if everyone in the class was given a problem to solve, the same problem. And the teacher said, go solve it. Go figure out how to solve this problem. And in the meantime, I want you to write down some things, like the decisions that you make, and why you made those decisions, and how you knew you came up with a solution. Okay, so write all those things. And then come back to class, and then talk about it. And have everyone discuss all of the steps that they, that they took, and come up with a series of guidelines so that they could tell other people that they could follow if they wanted to solve some problems. Do you think that they would come up with the scientific method? Probably. I would imagine, um, you know, because sci the scientific method, there's a reason why it's taught. Because, first of all, it's logical and it makes sense. And second of all, it works. So there's a reason why it's taught. It's just the way it's being taught seems a little um, non-intuitive. So I just, I think it would be really fantastic if we can Think about, as science educators, the way we present science. If we could present it in a more um, intuitive way, I think that that would be really awesome. <clears throat> and so I'll leave you with a few things. Um, the first thing is that if my 20-month-old can intuitively understand the basic premise of science, then I would say not only am I a scientist because I have a degree in chemistry, but you are a scientist and you are a scientist, and in fact, we are all scientists. You don't have to have a degree in science to be a scientist. And so I encourage you to wake up tomorrow, and, and I hope you think about yourself just a little bit differently, and you think about science just a little bit differently. And I hope that one day you all discover the scientists that I know um, you all are. And the second thing is, um, as, as a science educator, this is for other um, science educators, is we have got to stop presenting science on a platter. We have to start thinking about how we can nurture their scientific intuition. Because just as Morpheus says, there is a difference between knowing the path of a scientist and walking the path of a scientist. Thank you.